Today, we're giving this Christmas truck a makeover. Keep watching. You remember this truck. I was lucky enough to find this late in the season amongst some other things where it didn't belong. We're gonna have to take a variety of ribbon. I've got some of this open weave, kind of burlapy looking stuff. I've got some denim ribbon. This is unwired, but it's a stiff ribbon and it's got a little garden gate seen on it. It's a little bit of a white kind of rope design ribbon here. Some of this was thrifted, some came from Dollar Tree. I got this at the thrift store and this is a little bottle of jade acrylic paint. I'm gonna take a variety of flowers and picks. Whatever type of florals you want, I wanted to do more of a spring type theme so this would transition easily. I'm taking a thrifted oval shaped, I think it's like a 14 by 16 or 18, if you can see here, wreath. And we're going to start by working on this truck. So it's just stapled on, the little tag is, so you just pull that out of there. We're going to pop that off, and there's a staple underneath that needs to be removed so you don't poke yourself. So I'm using my little pliers here to just get right next to that and clip it off. If you do not sand off this glittery textured Merry Christmas it will show right through any paint you use that includes chalk paint so you need to get your sanding block this one came from Dollar Tree and go to town on it you want to try to get that as close to the surface as you can as smooth as you can when I finished I did have a little bit of texture left next to that uh, wheel over there on the S of Christmas but it's not too bad I think I pretty much covered it up you're going to sand it down and then wipe the residue off. You don't want that red and gold to bleed into anything else. So when I did this, I thought, hmm, maybe I should use a base layer of white since we're using a light color. So I went ahead and took my chalk paint and started working. Now, see, I have three hands. Look at that. That is my son. He is helping me. He broke his arm and he was kind of feeling down in the dumps and he wanted to do something. So... Since he broke his left hand, he's still got plenty of good use in the right one, and he's helping me. And I wanted to leave this in the video for him so he could see himself on YouTube. So give him a thumbs up. He did a good job, didn't he? Now I'm just gonna go back over all of the sides. This is kind of a dimensional item. So if you have this truck, you need to go over all the little nooks and crannies and get every bit of that red covered up. So just pick it up, look at it from different angles, and be sure that you cover all the red. Careful not to get it on your black tires. You can repaint them if you want to, but you know, just being a little more careful, you can avoid having to do that extra step. I think I got these paint brushes from Goodwill, but you can get these sponge brushes from Dollar Tree also. And a little tip, you might want to use the ones that come out of the automotive section because there's more in a container than what's in the crafting section. So save yourself a little there. All right, so once I've gotten two layers of the chalk paint and let them dry completely, I'm going to go back over with that jade. I'm going to go over and do the same process all over. I'm using a, I'm not going to say a heavy hand with the paint, but definitely heavier than I used with the chalk paint because it's acrylic. And this is going to be, hopefully, one coat does it. And that's what I'm going for, one coat. So you're just using a combination of just kind of pouncing around. It adds more color. Um, it deposits more paint, so it's thicker. It's a thicker coverage. So just kind of pouncing around a little bit and then rubbing it on where you need to rub it on. You can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna cover everything that I had white with the green. And I love, love, love this color. My husband came downstairs and saw what I was doing and he said that it it looked like an authentic color. It looked like a, um, you know, an old green. And I do have to agree. I think it's pretty. It's not your traditional colors, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go back over with a black um, paint pen and just go over because these tires have red 
around the edges. I couldn't get a close enough look to show you that, but underneath that little tire hub there and around the edges of the tire, it was red, like a line of red. So I wanted to get that completely off of there. You could use a Sharpie probably to do this if you don't have um, acrylic markers or paint pens. I think it would work fine. You could also use a little bit of paint. This made it really, really easy. Okay, so as you can see, the truck's going to fit nicely uh, across this sign. And I want to put it closer to the bottom than the top. Now we're going to work on the floral section that's going to go underneath. And I've just picked some thrifted fern pieces as part of my greenery. And again, I don't really have a, I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't have a firm plan in mind. So you're going to see me probably move some things around. All right, so we're using our non-traditional Valentine's colors here. And I thought that the blue would be really pretty. It also matches the blue in my ribbon. So I have the fern, the little white picks, the hydrangea in the middle, and then some blue on the sides there. We are going to move on to work on our pretty bow. You're just gonna take about seven or eight inches of that, overlap it on itself, really easy. You can see what I'm doing step by step. And then when you get two loops on each side, you can go ahead and cut it off. See there, two loops on each side. Then I'm going to take this ribbon and I don't know what happened to the denim ribbon that I had planned on using. It was days in between and I had been getting over a sickness, so I don't know where it went. So we're just gonna work without it. I'm gonna do the same thing for this pattern ribbon, but I'm gonna cut notches in the size, little bitty notches, like we're talking millimeters, just so I have something to grip onto when I start fluffing out the bow. So you saw me cut a little notch in one side. We're gonna cut a notch in the other side. And then I'm gonna wrap a piece of the jute cord around it, pattern on top, turn it to the back, squeeze it tightly with our jute. And then hold it in place and tie another knot or two in there to hold it nicely together because we're gonna do a lot of tugging on this bow to fluff it out. So you're gonna pull the insides out and away from each other, starting on the bottom, and you're gonna do the same thing on the top. Now, the good thing about the notches in there is that it will help you pull those pieces apart and they will stand up a little bit better. It'll give them more, um, I kinda wanna say freedom to move around. So there you go. And see, nobody's bow looks good in the beginning. You just have to play with it. You just have to keep moving it around, see where you want it, see how far you want to fluff it, how flat you want it, how thick you want it. And then I wanted to go ahead and put a middle on here. The jute is fine without it, but I decided to go ahead and put a strip around the middle. So I just took a little length of that and I'm gluing it down and then I'm gonna trim off the extra so that you don't see it. And I think that makes it a little pretty bow. It's rustic, that's what we have in my house, and so I think it fits great into the decor. Kind of farmhouse and rustic. Also maybe a little bit on the French farmhouse side, if you will. Now we're gonna make the tails. I'm gonna cut off, at the end of the spool, there's like a little a dimple or a little, I don't know, unnatural looking edge, but we wanna cut that off because I want the ends of these bows, these tails to be curly. So I don't want anything to interfere with the pattern, with the direction that they're rolling in, the direction of the curl, if that makes sense. Probably didn't, but it did in my head, I promise. We're going to take some of the burlap and some of the pattern, put the pattern on the top. We're gonna to pinch them together, place them on the back of the bow, and that piece of jute that we had left, we're just gonna tie it very tightly on the back. So now our bow, has tails. 
Still gonna look a little bit silly at first, but you'll see. You'll see what's happening in a minute. Okay, now you put yours in the center if you'd like. You can put yours to the side if you would like. On either side, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna thread this pipe cleaner through my jute here and then use this to attach it to the wreath. Now, if you don't want your jute to your uh, pipe cleaner to show, you need to put it through the inner surface, not around the outside diameter of the wreath. So just kind of feed it through the vines there. This may be a grapevine wreath. I think that's what this is called. So you see what I did there? And then you're just gonna pull it to the back. And kind of give it a nice tug to make it secure and then twist it and just tuck that back inside. No one is going to see this. This is not the type of wreath that you would hang on a glass door because you'll see all your hardware and you don't you don't want to see all that. This is the type that you would want to put on a wooden door or hang on your wall. One-sided. So I'm not going to glue my truck because I can just tuck it right in amongst the wreath, right in the vines, and it stays nice and secure just like that. And that way I can use that truck again for another project. I felt like it needed a little more something, so I've taken this other thrifted pick and I am just going to kind of place it amongst the fern there, put it in the back of the fern and then twisted the pieces together. Like you would see it in nature. It all grows together, right? It all grows together in the woods, in the forest. They live happily together. And I'm gonna add a couple more blue here. Just because I had them, I went ahead and added them. And I'm loving the combination here. Blue is my favorite color, green is my husband's favorite color. And I think this just is just gorgeous. It just fits my style beautifully. So, dovetailing my ends. And then they don't look very curly, but they will curl, and I'll show you that shortly, so stick around. So I'm just adding a little bit to the bow here. I thought I wanted to bring a little of the florals up to the top. Have a little more going on up there. And so I've chosen three of those different picks to put up there on top and tucked them behind the bow. If you don't look for florals and ribbon at the thrift store store you really really should that's where i got this this little uh garden looking ribbon there that's where i got that and most of these gorgeous picks because i'm not going to spend a ton of money at the store's full price on anything i'm just not going to do it so i've got some stickers from my old scrapbook days and i've just chosen a very simple love sticker Use whatever you like. If you want a freehand, you can freehand. If you got a Cricut, you can put something on there. You do whatever you like. You don't have to put anything on there at all if you don't want to. But I think this is simple and it is pretty. I think I've said pretty about a thousand times already. Okay, metal ruler underneath. Put your thumb on it and pull out on that ribbon. And it's gonna curl just like you use the little curling ribbons at Christmas time for packages. I don't think people do that anymore, but they used to. And it will curl that thick papery ribbon. Isn't that great? But if you're on the bottom of a spool, then you'll be able to do this with yours too. What do you think? I'm loving it. I'm loving the non-traditional, just a hint of Valentine's in this. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every view, every thumbs up. I'm going to see you guys again real soon. Bye.